Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, May 6th. So today we're going to have a pretty interesting day on our hands, mostly because of course the moon in Aries for the first part of the day, definitely going to give us some aha moments with some conjunctions that we're going to make. We're going to move into a power struggle energy between Saturn and Pluto. And then of course, we're going to be shifting into Taurus energy at the latter part of the day, bringing a little bit more heaviness and weight and stability into the name of the game as we prepare to build towards the new moon taking place in Taurus energy very late in the day, Tuesday, and for many of us, depending on the time zone that you are in, in the wee hours Wednesday morning. And so we definitely have some refining to do. We have some cultivating as far as new inspiration and excitement goes. We are trying to get future focused and we're trying to actually be grounded and anchored enough in our physical form to understand where it is that we can start kind of making some advances on a new path into a new direction, building a new foundation for our long-term goals. So there is this energy building. We are going to see the moon go void, of course, at 1.58 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a whole chunk of energy shifts taking place while the moon is void. And then we lock into Taurus energy at 5.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that is definitely going to bring us back down to Earth in our physical forms, a little bit more heavy and weighted than the first part of the day. There are nine different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon is in Aries energy going to come up to bump into team up with Mercury. So Mercury is ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves direct in this Aries energy. But again, we are in the post retrograde shadow period until the 13th. Having the moon and Mercury come together is an aha moment between our heart and our head. We're getting on the same page. A conjunction is an ending just as much as it is the beginning and we're starting to kind of I'm going to say shape our intentions. We are refining our inner realm of thought of emotions. We are getting on I'm going to say the right path, the right track with what it is that we now have to pursue. 158 a.m. is when the moon in this Aries energy is going to go void of course. And while the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, and especially in this Aries energy, look out for impulse and urgency, look out for tantrums and anger bursts, all of the things of the sort. However, the moon is going to come up to bump into team up with Chiron. So there's another ending slash beginning point taking place there as well. Chiron being the wounded healer in this Aries energy, helping us out with this new version of self, really kind of shedding the old skin, the old layers of the old version of self. There's going to be an aha moment, an epiphany on where it is that we're no longer attached to the old. We're no longer willing to look back. We really just want to build ourselves up in opposition optimism, in self-esteem, in motivation, in inspiration, in order to kind of grow through what it is that we're currently going through. The moon, while void, of course, is going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy, which is going to bring some clarity, some clarity first and foremost on where it is that we have to calm the ants in our pants in order for us to see very clearly our options, our opportunities to take action, to make moves, to actually move forward. But we're going to have a shift in our mood and our attitude in order for us to kind of break away from that impulsivity, break away from that harshness, break away from those little, let's call them tantrum points and understand where it is that we're wasting our energy in those ways and where it is that we need to kind of pull the reins back, get a grip on ourselves, and make sure that we're tapping into the positive manifestations of this Aries energy, which of course is the warrior spirit, the boldness, the bravery, the courage that we need, the energy management that we need to to actually have over our, let's call it inner realm and physical actions so that we're not acting out willy nilly. This is a time for us to open our mind space, open our heart space up to new ways of doing things, to advancing on this path, advancing towards this new goal, this new vision, this new dream that we now want to pursue. Now, here's an interesting dynamic for you. 6.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have Saturn 
the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline in this Pisces energy, again, trying to wrap up a 30 year cycle, deconstruct and totally disassemble the old ways of life, the old ways of doing things, the old, let's call it attachments, the old belief system. We have Saturn semi squaring, so creating tension and conflict with Pluto, the great transformer himself now retrograde in Aries energy. So this is the first of three different aspects that will be taking place. This is going to be followed up by another interaction on September 25th of this year between these two. And then the third and final will be January 26th of 2025. So this is a very long term transit, a low, slow boil, if you will. And this is going to highlight the power struggles, the frustration that we are having of trying to break away from the old, trying to collapse the old ways of doing things and really boss up to build something new. So I don't want you to feel defeated like, oh my goodness, we're going to be in this until January. We are going to have a lot of different energy shifts really support us in refining what we have to do to boss up, what we have to do to overcome some of these power struggles that of course are coming in our faces front and center in order for us to realize where it is that we need to change, but we're being blocked in some way of making those changes whether it be by a person or circumstances or our own damn selves, there's going to be some sort of realization of the resistance that we're having, maybe highlighting where it is that we're being too stubborn, if you will, maybe where it is that we're just, you know, beating our head against a wall, so to speak. Now, the name of this game, the way to kind of win this particular energy struggle is persistence, perseverance, determination. And a lot of this is the fact that, first of all, we have to be like tunnel vision in on what the end goal actually is. Secondly, not allow the power struggles, especially coming from the external world to like throw us off of our game. And then thirdly, we have to be open for adjustments. So right now we're trying to like piece together where it is that we want to go from here, what we want to do, what we want to pursue. But because this is Taurus energy, our initial plans are going to be so fixed. We're in a fixed earth energy. So we're going to be too attached to thinking that this is the way to do it. This is the only way to get there. This is what has to happen, A, B, C, in order for the final D product to actually be illuminated. When realistically speaking, yes, we're in a fixed earth sign as of now in order for us to stabilize, to understand what the long-term vision, goal, and dream actually is. But once we start moving through the zodiac wheel here, we're going to have different energies pushing us to quote unquote abandon or shift or adjust the current path that we're trying to piece together to try something different. So as much as we have to kind of keep that tunnel vision on what that end goal is, we have to kind of surrender how it is that we're going to get there. And the Saturn Pluto, you know, tension and conflict that's being highlighted right now, taking us all the way into 2025 is the growing pains that we are going to have to go through and grow through in order to keep our sights on the end goal, the end vision, but also test our ability, the power struggle within ourselves to kind of abandon a path, a direction, a let's call it system when the information and the details and the environment suggest that there could be a much easier, much more efficient, much better way. So this is definitely going to be a long term back and forth push and pull type of energy in order for us to overcome a lot of the self sabotaging behaviors that many of us have coded in our egoic programming and for us to collapse that in order to override it to build something better in the place of the things that we're currently trying to remove. And again, still remain flexible enough on our journey to get to that end goal to adapt and adjust when need be definitely going to be an interesting dynamic to kind of watch unfold over the rest of this year to be perfectly honest so keep that in the back of your mind because this is going to be an undertone from now taking us into the early months of 2025 okay so the moon, still void, of course, in this Aries energy, going to make a positive interaction first with Jupiter, then with Neptune. And this is a huge gap in between the two. So the first 
and, and it is a beneficial interaction with Jupiter, takes place at 10.15 a.m. The moon interacting with Neptune is taking place at 4.14 p.m., so a huge chunk of time there. Now, the first interaction, the moon with Jupiter, is putting some pep back in our step. It's putting some optimism and confidence back in our mood. It is kind of firing us up, building that excitement, that inspiration, that motivation within us in order to, again, focus on the goal, the end goal, if you will, the options, the opportunities that we have to make major changes in our physical realm, to actually grow and expand on the things that are working and to initiate a new chapter on the things that aren't. So we get this pep in our step. We're fired up. We have ants in our pants. They're working for us. We're building in motivation, momentum, and opportunity. The moon interacting with Neptune, and again, this is the last aspect that the moon in Aries is going to make before shifting into Taurus energy. This is going to remind us, again, Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is a reminder of what that dream, that vision, that mission, that purpose actually is. This is like restoring, renewing, regenerating, a new soul, new spirit to actually see us through. And again, the moon in Aries energy is a fire starter. So again, we're building our inner realm of inspiration, of motivation, of determination to actually see this goal, this vision, this mission through. 5.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to shift into Taurus energy, setting us up for the new moon window. So the very first aspect that we have taking place with the moon in Taurus takes place at 9.08 p.m. So again, another huge chunk of time in between aspects. And the moon in Taurus is going to get in the boxing ring, fight it out with Pluto. Pluto, again, retrograde in Aquarius energy. Taurus energy is a fixed earth sign. Aquarius energy is a fixed air sign. And so we're having a problem with our, let's call it, highest form of acting as the observer. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because emotionally speaking, in Taurus energy, we want to stick to the present. We want to connect to what is here and now. We want to really just emotionally stabilize and align with whatever is working, whatever feels good, whatever feels familiar, whatever feels comfortable. Pluto, on the other hand, he's pushing for change. He's pushing for a transformation of our inner realm. Again, the whole purpose of Pluto being retrograde is for us to take a good look at our inner realm and see what we need to do better, where we need to improve, where we can boss up, where we can basically stop this egoic programming from self-sabotaging good opportunities for us to grow and advance and expand into new levels of consciousness and awareness and where it is that that egoic programming creeps up and continues to kind of cluster F our efforts to break away from the old. This is a square. This is a tension point. This is conflict. There is a stubbornness that comes with the Taurus energy that now the sun and the moon are in that we don't want to move. We don't want to change. We want to resist all change always, even though we know it's good for us. And again, this is the inner realm power struggle. What parts of you are getting in the way of your growth, of your evolvement, of your expansion? This is going to highlight those particular areas and hopefully put you in a pressurized situation to break free of that once you get a grip on where it is that you're actually blocking your own path, your own success, your own growth. The moon is then going to semi-square Saturn. So again, Saturn, the Lord of Karma in this Pisces energy. Now, normally I really enjoy Taurus and Pisces energy working together because it means growth. It means inspiration. It means that we have the ability to bring forth certain elements from our imagination, from our dream, from our vision. We're able to bring it into fruition, into this materialistic realm through that Taurus energy. This is a semi-square though, so we're not really getting along too well. Emotionally speaking, we're getting a little bit of a harsh reality check from Mr. Saturn, where it is that maybe we're too fixated, too present, maybe where it is that we're being too stubborn, where it is that we're holding on too dearly to what is old, tried, tested, and true, and where it is, because again, Saturn being a Pisces energy, immutable sign, where we have to be a little bit more flexible, 
especially with seeing the structure of our lives for what it is and not for the way that we wished it would be. Meaning we got a lot of things going on right now that are just not sustainable. They're not making us happy. They don't make us feel safe. They don't make us feel hopeful or wishful for the future. But yet we're holding on to these aspects that are essentially preventing our growth, preventing us from actually moving on. So again, a semi-square highlights the struggle in order for us to hopefully have an open mind and an open heart of where it is that we got to get out of our own damn way. Now, the last thing that we got going on here today is a beautiful interaction going to help us out, but maybe a little bit harsh for some people if you're not willing to receive the truth as it is instead of the way that you wished it would be. But we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, coming up to, bumping into, teaming up with Chiron. Okay, the wounded healer. So this is a little bit of a rewind. I have to take you back and I have to take you back to March 20th. That is when Mercury and Chiron conjuncted for the first time. The North Node was a part of that little conjunction the first time around as well. Now, that was around the time that we moved into the eclipse energy. So confusion, you know, really taking a good look at our old selves at that point, because the new self was trying to break through and be anchored in, but we were still suffocating it for all it was worth. We had to go through that eclipse season. Uh, we had that full moon lunar eclipse in Libra energy in March. And then, of course, we had the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries energy April 8th. And then on April 15th, while Mercury was ret retrograde, Mercury and Chiron met up again really kind of putting us in a deeper realization, a deeper reflection on the old version of self versus new version of self. So where we're at right now, of course, we just kind of cleared that eclipse energy. And again, we're still pushing our way forward, trying to get through this post retrograde shadow period that Mercury's still in. But basically, with Mercury and Chiron coming together, suddenly the downloads that we receive through eclipse season, they're starting to pop off and make sense. We are now in a position to have a little bit more intuitive understanding of a lot of the things that we were very confused about taking us back to March and again, carrying us through eclipse season. Um, secondly to that, we're in a sensitive situation right now because there are certain conversations that we need to have in order to truly kind of unpack our thoughts and feelings, especially in personal relationship dynamics that we've been hesitant to do. That finally, now, because of this particular interaction, uh, we're feeling the sensitivity within ourselves so much so that we're feeling this energy kind of boil up and boil over and therefore verbal vomit is a thing. We're having some super sensitive topics come up for discussion that will help or hinder the progress and growth of certain relationship dynamics. Now, because this is like a hypersensitive type of energy, first of all, we have to expect that there's going to be a huge amount of pressure in the headspace. Again, take a listen to the Ascension forecast for this week to understand where the energies are going to pop off and how that's going to manifest in physical discomfort for many of us through the healing adventure that we're currently on. Um, but this is going to be a lot of information to process because again, the downloads have already been downloaded within us. We just didn't know what to make of them. We didn't really understand them. We couldn't articulate them. Now it's like those data packets, you know, when you install something new on your computer and you've been waiting for these to load. Well, that's what we've been in. We've been in loading since eclipse season. And now the file is actually downloaded and we get to open up this new operating system and actually see things from a different set of eyes. So yes, it's good. It's going to bring clarity. It's going to bring aha moments. It's going to bring epiphanies. It's going to bring more focus on, on what we need to be focused on. But it's also going to kind of stir us up a little bit, put us in information overload. And because of that and Chiron kind of adding an extra layer of sensitivity to things, we could find ourselves in some very, very sensitive topics and themes, sensitive discussions that, again, could make or break certain circumstances and situations, scenarios that it's going to have a major impact on what we're focused on as we move through this new moon in Taurus. 